Hi, welcome to uh, Monday Morning Bridge Connection. We're going to be in Psalm 119, so you can begin to turn there. We're going to begin in a moment, you know, in verse 81, I think it is. I'm going to have to turn there because I started without even turning to Scripture in the Bible yet. So I was studying it earlier, but I closed it up, and uh, so we'll both have to turn there. You know, the psalmist was telling God, that he was totally, totally exhausted. He was exhausted physically. He was a, a exhausted, you know, uh, emotionally. He was exhausted mentally and spiritually. It just means he was worn out, completely consumed, about to perish is what he was saying, coming to the end. You know, in, in other words, the trouble he was experiencing wore wore down not only his faith and hope, but also his body. He was just done. You know, at some point in all of our lives, in every one of our lives, at some point, where we will likely, we will likely, likely, what is that? We will likely all be able to identify with the intense suffering of this faithful servant of God. Some fierce or terrible uh, extremely painful trial will lead us to feel that we just can't go on. Let's pick it up at verse 81. We're going to be down through 88. Verse 81. My soul faints for your salvation, but I hope in your word. So the believer, you know, we, we can be um, afflicted, but not crushed. My soul faints for your salvation, but I hope in your word. In other words, I'm going through this, but I'm not done. I'm going through this. I'm hurting. It's I'm in pain. This is difficult. You know, I am afflicted, but I'm not destroyed. I'm not crushed. I may be perplexed, but I'm not driven to despair. I may be persecuted, but I'm not forsaken. I may be struck down, but I'm not destroyed. Any of those, does that sound familiar at all? Well, that's Second Corinthians. Four, eight, and nine, and here the psalmist just languishes uh, for God's saving help, but help is still is still alive. It's still there, even though he's he's languishing for it and doesn't know what to do, and it's it's so hard and it's so heavy, and he's in, in such pain, but he still has hope in, his, in in God's word, still quoting God's word, you know, and. Both my daughters have been ill, you know, the, the, the past few weeks and uh, both been in the hospital at the same time, um, you know, with, with COVID and uh, they were, they put one of them in ICU for a while and she, she got out last night of ICU, put in a, in a, in a normal room and uh, my other doc, daughter, daughter uh, was released a few days ago and she's home on oxygen. But there was times and, and uh, the second one, Michelle will also join Jackie out out of the hospital soon, I'm sure. But there were times during this when, you know, it, uh, it was so excruciating. It was so painful. You know, um, Saturday was, was the anniversary. I don't know if that's a good word. It was the date of the day that Wanda, my wife, had gone home to Jesus three years ago. And uh, that was a day that I was praying for my daughters at the same time. And, you know, there was the grief. I was uh, grieving over the loss of my wife. She would be so good in this situation now with the girls. She would know how to pray and what to say and what to do and what verses. And she would just be so good in that. And I'm scrambling to trying to, you know, figure out uh, what, what I should share and what verses I should send and what I should be praying and, and on and on and on. And, you know, but... None of us have ever given up. We've had scores of people praying for, for my kids, and you know the the what's being sent a lot of the time are verses, you know, scripture that's just it's so encouraging, and uh, scripture does that and it brings you back back to reality. But it's been a time when you know I I, I have felt like uh, this is tough. How, how how could this be happening at this same time, same date? You know, then your mind just goes wacko on you for a while. And then you fall on your face and begin to 
cry and pray before God and say, God, this isn't happening. Get these thoughts out of my mind. And you've all been there. I know that. Then you come back to reality and say, God, I trust your word. I'm in, I'm in anguish, of course. I've got uh, two girls that have given me my, my, my grandkids that have, you know, given me my great grandkids. So, you know, they've been around a while and I, I want them around a while longer. And so it's just been a, a tough time. But, you know, you, you look at verse 82 and it says, my eyes fail from seeing your word saying, when will you comfort me? My eyes fail from seeking your word, saying, when will you comfort me? You know, even though the psalmist is, his eyes grow dim when searching for the fulfillment of God's promise of deliverance, he doesn't pray, will you comfort me? But rather, when will you comfort me? You know, it's okay. It's okay to be honest with God. It's okay to say, God, I don't understand why this isn't taken care of. When, when are you going to do something here? When are you going to bring peace? When are you going to bring comfort? When are you going to bring, you know, an answer? When, 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 when you know, and, and it's okay to ask. Uh, he, he might not answer you straight out, but it's okay. That's the God that we serve. He's not intimidated by our, our questions or our thoughts. And, um, he knows anyway what we're thinking. So, you know, Jesus said one time, my father seeks those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And that's truth that there are times I'm broken. I don't know what to do. And God, I really wish you comfort, comfort me or give me some answers as I'm searching the word and searching my heart and searching things, you know, and then, you know, so it's, it's okay. It's okay to be honest before God. You know, God, I don't understand this. He He knows you don't. So tell him. He'll, he'll help us figure it out. You know, God, I don't know why you haven't done this. He, that isn't intimidating because he has reason. He has purpose. He may share that reason or purpose with us, you know, through the word or through speaking to our hearts, or he may not, but it's okay. It's okay to be honest. But in all of that, it's not, the, the psalmist didn't say, will you comfort me? Or am I ever going to get out of this? Or, you know, or have you left me? It's none of that. It's just, when is this going to happen, God? Verse 83. For I have become like a, a wineskin in smoke, yet I do not forget your statutes. Uh, a wineskin in smoke is best I could understand, and as I was reading on this, was um, shriveled and, and blackened. And the simile just kind of answers its own question there. You know, we as believers and the psalmist as he's praying this, um, he was parched. He was unsaltly, I mean unsightly through wailing. But he's not hopeless as long as he has the word to fall back on. So it's like he was he was shriveled up, maybe. He was parched. He was unsightly, you know, through wailing. I, I look at myself during those times, and I don't even want to go out of the house because I, I look much older than I really am, and that's not easy to look older because I look old enough. But, you know, there's 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 just things that happen in your face, and they droop, and your eyes are red, and, and various things. and and um, But he wasn't hopeless. Look at that. My eyes fail. From me to your work. When will you comfort me? For I become like a wineskin in smoke, yet I do not forget your statutes. So no matter what's going on, we can't forget his word. You know, your word have I hid in my heart that I might sin and I might not sin against you. We need to, you know, get his word in our hearts and and uh, have it there and be solid in that word. You know, life at its best is uh, very, very brief. Look at verse 84. How many are the days of your servant? When will you execute judgment on those who persecute me? So we don't know how long we're going to live. And if we live to be 100, it's still brief. It's still not very long. You know, the, the days of affliction seem to occupy a very disproportionate share 
of our lives. And the psalmist was saying it's time for the Lord to act by punishing the oppressors. And remember, the psalmist was being fought against. People were coming against him and and uh, oppressing him for his stand in the word and his confidence in the word. And and so, uh, you know, he was being afflicted in that way. And and uh, he's just saying, Lord, it's it's time. It's time for you to do something, man. You know, how many days? When will you execute judgment on those who persecute me? You know, so when, when, when's this going to be over? When are you going to do some of these people that are causing all the problems in my life, God? Oh, how many times I've prayed that. You know, we don't pray the imprecatory Psalms anymore. That was Old Testament, but there are times I really want to. You know what the imprecatory Psalms are? We've gone through some of them. We've talked about them. Those are the Psalms where the psalmist was praying, Oh God, bring harm to them. Break their teeth. Punish them. Bring pain. Destroy them. You know, just those. And um, that was before the time of grace. So we can't pray that. I don't think we're supposed to. There are times when I just almost crossed the line. I'll, I'll go as far as, Lord, do whatever is necessary to bring them into your saving knowledge or to, to repent of what they're in. But I don't tell him what to do, you know. And if whatever he needs to do, but he's so full of grace and compassion, and that that's okay, too. However he wants to deal with people. Look at verse 85. The proud have dug pits for me, which is not according to your law. So the villains against this psalmist in this verse are, are, are people that are lawless, you know, and godless. These two characteristics go together. They plot the downfall of the righteous and the innocents. It's an evidence that they refuse to conform to God's law. Look at that. The proud have dug pits for me, which is not according to your law. So the psalmist says, they don't, they refuse your law. And I know your law. I know your precepts. I, I read them. I, I live in them, he's saying. And I, I know what's right. And I know what isn't right. And so they're trying to get me and they're plotting my downfall and they're digging this, this, uh, this pit for me to, to fall in. And, and uh, you, know, um, you know, the world doesn't like people that unnecessarily that are right with God or trying to be or living a, a Christian life and, you know, doing the things that a Christian would do and not doing the things that a Christian wouldn't do and those things. And a lot of times the world just doesn't like that. It brings conviction. It, it brings an awareness of the way that they're supposed to be living and what they're supposed to be doing. And so it's uh, it's hard to, to really to really live that way at times, you know? And uh, I mean, in the world anyway. Um, verse 86, all your commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongfully. Help me. All right. <laughs> He's calling out for help. There is nothing. I want to tell you, no matter how much you search, no matter how hard you look, no matter how hard you, you investigate, there is not one thing that's as dependable as the Word of God. He's promised to stay with us. He's promised to never leave us. He's promised to rescue us, His persecuted people, His persecuted people. So when we're attacked by people's lies and their deceptions, we can confidently confidently just cry out. And this is a, a verse that has, is on my lips so often. It's a verse that it's just two words. And through the day when all of a sudden something comes up and I wasn't prepared, I just whisper a simple prayer, help me. Usually it's three words, help me, Jesus. And, and uh, because I need help because I'm blindsided and I, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to respond. I don't know what to speak. I don't know what decision to make. I don't know how to handle this, this particular uh, situation. And so I just, I just pray that prayer. Jesus, help me. Help me, Jesus. I, I, I just, I, I need your direction. I, I need your help. I, I need your strength. I, I, I need your wisdom. That's what we've, we've, we've read, you know, as we've gone through 80 plus verses so far in 
in, in this particular Psalm 119. And we've seen over and over and over again the value of knowing the Word of God, the value of reading the Word of God, the value of applying the Word of God. And if I have to apply it, maybe I apply it more there than any time else when I don't know what to do. By saying, help me, Jesus, I'm saying a lot of things. I'm saying, I can't handle this. I don't know what to do. I'm weak. But I'm also saying, you know how to handle this. You know what to do. And you're strong. So I'm, 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 I'm giving myself over to my Savior. I'm giving myself over to the one who is able to handle the situation, is able to give me the right words to speak and the, the right attitude to have and the right position to take and the, the proper, you know, um, way to walk in, in this particular thing. And it's so important that we, that we understand that. Verse 87, they almost made an end of me on earth, but I did not forsake your precepts. Wow. Spurgeon made a great statement, made many of them. Um, but one of them he said was, if we stick to the precepts, we will be rescued by the promises. Even to the point where we despair of just living. We despair of even existing. We despair of life. We, we wake up in the morning and we, 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 we wish morning had not come. Um, we, we, we wish there was another several hours just to escape in our sleep before we wake up in the morning. And, you know, even if we reach the place where we despair in that way, we, 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 we can never, no, we, we could, but we should never despair in our obedience. Help will come. We used to sing an old chorus back in the day, even before the day, it was before my day. I used to sing it with my parents, my grandparents. It was, trust and obey, for there's no other way. And it was just, you know, and it, but of course, we only believe, only believe. And we need to understand that belief is, 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 is the first step in, in, in obeying, you know. And as we simply believe, whether we can understand what we're believing or not, and so much of what I believe I don't understand, but I accept by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So I take steps of faith and I say, I believe this by faith, God. And as I believe it and choose to believe it, then, and only then, then am I able to walk in obedience because I believe that even though what I'm looking at doesn't conform to my image or doesn't uh, fit in my perspectives, but it's God's truth. And I will live in that. Verse 88. Revive me according to your loving kindness so that I may keep the testimony of your mouth. Revive me according to your loving kindness that I may keep the testimony of your mouth. The best prayer the most successful prayer, the real true prayer, the prayer where we really touch God comes from this inward necessity. Hear what the psalmist says here. He says, the Lord will spare his life so that he can go forth to glorify God by obeying his word. Revive me according to your love and kindness so that I may keep the testimony of your mouth that I can glorify people, that I can glorify you. Not glorify people, but to people I will glorify you as I obey your word and walk in obedience. And God, I, I really believe that as we've slowed down in this psalm, I, 
I really believe the answer to, to how we're supposed to walk in these days is simply, I walk in obedience to your word, but I'm only going to do that as I know your word. And you're only going to hold me accountable to walk in, to, to walk in the word that I'm, that I'm knowing, that I'm, but you're going to hold me accountable to take the time to read and to study. So I want to be doing what you've called me to do, Lord. And then as I read and study and I understand this, then I'm going to be accountable to that, for that, for that truth. Oh God, I just thank you for the truth of your word. And I, all of us here today, Lord, want to have the same faith and the same hope and the same determination in our times of affliction, in our times of oppression, in our times of, of, of loss that this psalmist had. We want that same confidence that you will come and comfort us in your timing and it'll be right. You will meet our needs and we're going to walk in obedience to your word because we trust your word and we believe your word. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, we will uh, see you tomorrow and we will pick it up at verse 89 down through verse 96 tomorrow. God bless you.